Get started with that. Mainly cooking. because I'm not drinking iced tea at night. I had to give that much sugar. Let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present with John Council Member John Hoover excused. Please rise for the pledge and I ask you to remain standing after the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge As we just recited the pledge, two days after Memorial Day, it's a good reminder that we should never forget all those who gave their lives so we can live in this great free country. So let's take a moment to recognize them. Thank you. All right, there's no minutes for approval. Welcome everyone on this stormy night. Appreciate you coming out. A couple of uh, quick announcements, a little bit shorter than my last time. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a uh, multi-town uh, gathering at the uh, community house discussing reducing single-use pl plastic. This was uh, sponsored by environmental commissions for most, most of the neighboring towns, uh, led by our own. Uh, it was a great turnout with a lot of great ideas shared. Uh, and I have uh, volunteered to work with the area municipalities to have a joint effort to reduce plastic waste. So more to come on that in the coming months. Um, this past, as I just mentioned, you know, this is two days after Memorial Day. For the first time in a few years, we had an absolutely beautiful Memorial Day and with a, a great parade and ceremony. And as we say every year, our Patriotic Celebrations Committee with uh, Carmela Vitali as council liaison, Ron DiBiase as um, the chair, every year put together such a meaningful uh, ceremony and parade so people recognize what that Memorial Day is not the kickoff of summer, but the recognition of all those, as I said before, gave their lives so we can live free. Um, I also want to mention uh, Jeff Pettit, who was the MC and the arranger of the flyover by uh, a um, <laughs> Coast Guard uh, helicopter, did uh, two uh, spins around Hartley Dodge, and uh, it may be his most likely, unless he flies back for Memorial Day, could be his last one as MC as he'll be moving off to uh, Colorado come the winter time. Not the time I would move to Colorado, but that's what he's decided to do. <laughs> At the uh, Memorial Day Parade, I also uh, presented proclamations. They were mentioned to Angelo Iosa, a Vision Electric. Angelo vo volunteered to catalog all of the brick pavers that are at the World War I uh, Memorial at Condorso Way, so that they, now there's a good, easy directory. They've been put on a, uh, a CAD drawing so people can easily find their, um, their bricks. And so if you see Angelo, please thank him for his effort. And it was very special to present the uh, proclamation to um, Dr. Bob Newhouse, who was the, um, take it the right word, the- Principal. Uh, Head Marshal. Grand Marshal for the parade, thank you. I keep thinking of him, he's my, grammar school principal and you get caught up on that but uh, so it was great to uh, recognize Bob Newhouse he fought and was injured in the Battle, Battle of the Bulge has been a long time uh, Florham Park resident but his heart has been in uh, Madison he started his career at the Madison YMCA pretty much in the same job I started my career at which was interesting I got to, to coach his son and grandson and so to recognize him as he approaches 95 years old was uh, quite an honor. So again, if you see Bob Newhouse around, congratulate him and thank him for his service to our country. I mentioned the weather. Last night was a little scary time with alerts. Uh, the, there was actually a tornado that touched down in Mendham and we were under a watch for a while and it seemed to scoot past pretty fast. We missed the worst of it, but uh, there was some damage around town. I want to thank um, police for taking care of things. There was uh, some manhole covers that were popped because of the sudden rush of water and a, a tree or two went down. They were all addressed very quickly. And for those that were at the last meeting, the um, sound is much better. We had a little some 
PA issues, so we should be in good shape. And uh, chandeliers have been flickering, so if all of a sudden we change the lighting a little bit, that's because they've been flickering. It's a, you know, a grand old house with its challenges. Move on to reports from committees. Public safety, Council President Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. From the fire department, the uh, fire department is required to have their fire pumps and ground ladders tested annually. The testing was conducted last week by a third party agency. And I'm happy to report that all the pumps and ladders have passed their testing with no issues. And then um, on June 1st, this Saturday, a week, it is National Trails Day. And Madison is having a ribbon cutting for our um, new Summer Hill Trails. Um, here's the map. Here's the information. At 11 o'clock, uh, the mayor will be um, opening up the trails and we'll have uh, people guiding you and just talking about this with uh, the trails, uh, the money that we receive from the county and our own open space trust fund made these trails in really great shape. It's a beautiful park and so I hope all of you will come out and see it. Thank you. All right, thank you. And finance for borough clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Vitaly. Um, from the clerk's office, there's a reminder that June 4th is primary election already. Polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, and you should look for your sample ballots in the mail this week. They were mailed May 29th. Uh, the sample ballots are very important. Residents should contact the county if any information is not correct, if you do not receive one. And if you can't get the county, you, um, please uh, call Liz at the borough clerk's office and she'll help you. Um, from the finance uh, department, the auditors were back in, in Hartley Dodge this week completing their field work. Many borough staff were working with them and answering their questions, including the CFO, department heads, and our payroll and accounts payable staff. The auditors expect to have the draft audit completed by June the 10th. The audit committee will be meeting to review the draft audit with staff from Nisabachia on June 17th. The chief financial officer has been working with the meter staff and the qualified purchasing agent on the steps needed to buy new upgraded handheld units for the meter readers. They were also working on a new bid document to purchase over 1,700 more meters that are compatible with the new automated metering system. They hope that the document will be on the street next week. Chief Financial Officer also recently met with the Chatham CFO and Jennifer Manick from the Madison Chatham Joint Meeting, which is our sewer treatment plant, to review internal controls and make improvements to the accounting and financial systems at the sewer treatment plant. From the tax collector's office, the, the staff is preparing for the tax sale later this year and coordinating with the utility building staff. Currently, 18 parcels still owe 2018 taxes. New delinquent notices were mailed out today to those 18 property owners, warning them about tax sale and explaining that their name will be published in the, in the paper and they, if they do not correct this issue. The tax collector is preparing the annual senior and, and uh, veteran deduction reports, which are due to the state on June the 5th. From the utility billing department, one of the staff members in the utility building department took a new job at the clerk's office. Even though they were shorthanded, the remaining utility building, building staff are doing a great job keeping up with the work. And we're happy to have uh, this new person helping Liz, who really needed the help. Thank you. Thank you. Utilities, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, in the electric department, work on our new Butler building is progressing. The steel's been delivered, and the footings will be poured next. Uh, second, at our last utility meeting, uh, we reviewed and tonight we're distributing the annual reliability report for the electric utility. It's this document which is sitting on the table behind me. Um, the score that we, we calculated for last year was a 28 minute average outage for the residents, which is significantly better than surrounding utilities, which scored almost 40 minutes on average. Uh, and last, the, the follow on what uh, Councilwoman Bailey just said, the electric utility meter reading team led by Jim Trimble has now installed over 1,200 of the new automated meters, um, which represents about 20% of our customer base, um, with the extra 1,800 will be about halfway done. We've also installed the demo gatekeeper, uh, which is a, an electronic uh, wireless reading device, which allows us to collect data from the new meters remotely, 
uh, the ones that we've already installed. And we expect to be getting a demo from Byram Labs in the near future uh, once they've been able to collect a significant amount of data from those meters. So we'll be reporting more on that at a later date. And then from the water department, our contractor has completed the water main installation on Vinyl Place. Uh, the new 8-inch water main was filled and is awaiting bacteria sample before they can make new connections to the Madison Avenue water main and the service into Drew University. And finally, the new ADA uh, dog and water bottle accessible drinking fountain will be installed at the Butter Mayon Park on Central Avenue near Barden Street. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. And Public Works and Engineering, Ms. Byrne. Thank you, Mayor. Engineering Department is uh, continuing to work on replacing streets. Uh, Chateau Theory has a, has a very nice, lovely new surface, and I understand that tonight we will be uh, getting it striped. Um, DPW continues to maintain borough vehicles and buildings. They are also tasked with maintaining the playing fields and recreation fields. And a note to um, parents, please ask your children to clean up their water bottles before they actually leave the field. It's, um, it's actually a, a piece of contention. Um, on, the, on the happy side, we have uh, playground sand now in the sandbox at the Dodge playground. Um, I, <clears throat> I, I also understand that there are um, a variety of shovels and panhandlers, and if anybody finds gold there, then that's even better. Um, Parks Advisory is here tonight to talk about the um, funding of a dog park. Um, and Saturday, as Austrian Bailey re remarked, is National is Trails Day, at which point we are going to be um, showing off the remarkable and um, wonderful park that we have restored here in Madison. And then finally, uh, Sustainable Jersey is, a, um, is an organization that... that um, advocates for environmental issues within municipalities. And we have a local um, group called the Sustainable Jersey Committee. They've been working very hard. And the administration um, has been working very hard on making our application. Um, and so I really, I just wanted to shout out that, uh, um, oh, also, I'm sorry, um, Memorial Day um, Parade, DPW worked overtime to get all of the hanging garden baskets and uh, the flags set up for Memorial Day. So, you know, we really ha we have a, an administration, we have people that are vested in Madison, vested in the community, and uh, that's what makes it great to be here. Thank you. And for health and community affairs, Ms. Cohen. Uh, for community affairs, just a few things. The DDC is planning uh, an event called Rose City Summerfest for on June tw June fifteenth from noon to six. Information's on RoseNet, and the link to purchase tickets is both there and social media. Family friendly event will include all day music, great local food, amusements, and a beer garden. The Madison Farmers Market is now open, and will run from Thursday last week through October twenty fourth. The hours will hours will remain two to seven p.m. And finally, Bottle Hill Day sponsorship and application packets are now available on rosenet.org and have been sent via email to past participants. From the health department, pool inspections were completed um, and the pool was able to open uh, with the great weather this weekend and I can attest um, it was very crowded as I dropped my own children off there to enjoy the weather. Health inspections were completed at the first farmer's market and will continue periodically through the season. All those in attendance were in compliance with requirements. And finally, residents are again reminded to be mindful of their property maintenance. Please be considerate of your neighbors. If you have concerns about property, please call the health department. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any communications or petitions? Uh, yes, Mayor. There were several emails, both um, in favor of and opposed to Ordinance 20, uh, 2019. Thank you. And now we're on to the first of two invitations for discussion. This is limited to our agenda discussion or the resolutions. Our agenda discussion tonight is open space trust fund grant requests and the ordinance 21 and 22, which will be introduced tonight. And I will quickly go through the uh, resolutions so you know them, uh, not only if you want to comment on them, but also so you know what's in the consent agenda resolutions. So those are the only things you can comment on on this round. Later in the meeting, you can comment on other topics. There's also hearings for any ordinances that are up for hearing tonight, which is coming shortly. 
So the ordinance resolution 169 authorizing Friday evening downtown concert series, which will be June 28th, July 12th, 26th, August 9th and 23rd, and September 6th, between 5 and 9, right in front of the museum. August, uh, resolution 170 authorizing claimant certification requirement, which makes it a little bit easier to process uh, payments and other things. Um, to 170s there. 171, approving uh, temporary signs for Morris County 4-H Club. This is, will be going up between July 1 and July 24th. 172, authorizing purchase of construction vehicle under Educational Services Commission. And so that is for uh, not to exceed 24,000 and is funded through the Construction Department operating budget. 173 is a right raffle license for the Ambulance Corps. 174, appointment of Act, uh, rescinding appointment of acting subcode official who will stay the, the uh, subcode official will be serving as a contractor for <coughs> 500 per month. Uh, 175 is appointing Arthur Herring to the position of public safety telecommunications officer, uh, which is basically dispatch. Uh, 176 is uh, authorizing contract to uh, Matina and Sons for. $359,000 for the 2019 water main replacement project on Grove and Highland, and that was funded through Ordinance 6, 2019. Resolution 177, confirming membership of Michael Kitsopoulos of um, the Madison Hose Company Number 1, and that's a uh, volunteer. The um, 178 is ratifying contract award for the striping work on Chateau Theory. We're not doing it tonight. We're ratifying the, uh, the spending of it in case anyone was wondering if we're going to do that in the rain. And that was funded through Ordinance 2, 2019. The um, resolution 179 is uh, awarding contract to Denville's line striping for striping work not to exceed 25000 This was also funded through Ordinance 2, 2019. And the next... Uh, Group of uh, ordinances, this is 180 through 186, are all related to the uh, sustainable uh, New Jersey certification for, for uh, Madison that uh, Maureen just mentioned. So these all help us attain uh, our sustainable New Jersey uh, certification and also reaffirm our commitment to a sustainable lifestyle. So 180 is responsible pet ownership programs in community. 181 is supporting New Jersey Wildlife Action Plan. 182 is um, the Madison Arts and Cultural Alliance's creative team. 183, adoption of environmental uh, preferable purchasing policy. 184, adoption of environmentally conscious grounds and maintenance policy. 185 is support of resource saving Best, saving best practices policy that we, is, was adopted June 10th, 2013, and again on May 9th, 2016. 186, adoption of anti-idling zone measures by government agencies, and that's supporting the adoption of anti-idling zone measures by government agencies, schools, businesses, and other organizations. And then the last two, last, um, Two here are um, non-sustainable. Um, One is the appointment of Tyler Peterson to summer intern position, public works at uh, $12 an hour, and a uh, disbursement from the Jacob Henry P P uh, Perkins Trust disbursement, which is a, a fund to support Madisonians in need. So those are the consent items. You can comment on any of those or the open space discussion. Anyone wishing to comment on those things, please step forward. Seeing none, we close this part of the meeting and we move on to agenda discussions, open space trust fund grant requests. Ostry. Right. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to present two grant requests. I, I know that we have some of the people in the audience who may help me with answers and questions if, if some people here have any questions? Um, the first one uh, I'd like to discuss is the implementation of the conservation management plan completed for the borough uh, by the Land Conservancy of New Jersey in July 2016 on the 14 acre portion of the Madison Recreation Complex, which is outside the deer fence area. And the decision to be made is to um, implement the restoration project over three years and to the total project number is $62,700. 
and a total of $49,275 was requested from the Open Space Recreation and Historic Preservation Trust Fund. And basically, the Open Space Trust Fund would be um, giving out about $16,425 per year for 2019, 2020, and 2021, because it's a three-year project. And this project will benefit the community by encouraging sustained efforts to protect and enhance our native environment. It will provide much needed forage and habitat for native pollinators and birds in our urban landscape. With native pollinators, bees, wasps, butterflies, moths, and hummingbirds, and honeybee populations under greater stress, creating a habitat to attract and nourish these beneficial species will help enhance the vitality of the entire community. And this project does fall into the open space um, fund purpose to preserve natural resources and preserve the native landscape. The Madison Community Garden Advisory Committee has been partnered with the Friends of the Madison Trade, uh, Shade Trees, who have agreed to fund planting of $6,000 in native trees over three years. The Shade Tree Management Board has agreed to fund up to $2,000 for calorie pear removal. Uh, Garden Club of Madison has received a $1,725 grant from the Garden Club of America in 2019 to help with the project. And they hope to continue to ask for, or they will continue to ask for additional two years of funding for a total of up to $6,000 over the next three years. Friends of Sustainable Madison agreed to fund $1,700 in calorie pear removal. And the Community Garden and Bee Club agreed to fund $2,000 to support an edible garden. And the Open Space Advisory Committee uh, voted and recommended that the council approve this grant. And just a little background. Um, the MRC was, was bought with open space um, county funding, uh, local funding, and Green Acres funding. And there were restrictions when you, when you purchase land like that. It's, there's restrictions placed by Green Acres and the county on how the land can be used. For example, you can't build uh, a structure on, on the land. You can have an accessory building, but you can't build like a gymnasium. And the playing fields were designed and organized by the Recreation Committee. So we um, asked the mayor to set up a separate advisory committee for the passive portion. And that was set up with representatives from parks, the Shade Tree Management Board, the garden, senior citizens, environmental commission, residents, council members sat on that committee, and a dog park rec representative uh, sat on that committee. At the time, around 2015, the committee recommended to the council um, that the Land Conservancy pr uh, produce a conservation management plan for the hillside portion of that passive area. We had already de designated the deer enclosure area as for trails and to um, remove invasive species and plant, na uh, plant native plants. The council approved the funding to the Land Conservancy, and in July 2016, um, the, the Land Conservancy submitted the conservation report um, to the council. So tonight, several of the groups who participated in the planning of that passive portion of the MRC are asking for funding to carry out the conservation plan, which this council approved in 2016. And recently, the council uh, previously um, supported two other funding requests for this particular area. So um, I would like to see support for um, this because this is what we've been working for. It's, it's um, to continue to provide open space and environmental protection in the town of Madison. And we don't have that many open spaces left. So that's the number one request. Um, should we start with any questions from the council on that one, and then we'll go to the dog bark? Yeah, any, any questions on the, Pat? So I appreciate all the work everyone's done. I think it's great. And you know, at the time, I think when we approved this, it was after the governor had vetoed legislation that we had asked our assembly and Senate um, representatives to get, because at the time we wanted to do uh, solar power on that piece of property. Um, but subsequent to that, in fact, only in the last week and a half, I became aware, really from Councilman Wolkowitz, uh, when we were sitting in a meeting discussing committees, um, that he had come up with another plan much more recently. He had spoken to our state representatives and that they felt it was possible to resurrect that legislation. And given the fact that if we do this particular 
uh, implement this plan, it would preclude us ever using it for that particular purpose, yet that is probably the only place in Madison where we could develop a substantial solar field, which would also have a tremendous benefit for the environment. In fact, I would argue a greater benefit given the, the issue that we face with climate change. I would really prefer if we had the opportunity to investigate that first before we moved ahead with this. It might cause us to pause for a month or two, but I think given the fact that this is going to be a final decision we make once we implement this plan, we really should look at competing um, priorities for that particular space. You know, um, I, I, first of all, the solar panels was never discussed by the entire council. The Land Conservancy Plan in 2016 was discussed, and that land was purchased for the reason why the Open Space Trust Fund was established, to preserve open space, mm -hmm. to provide it's one of our last open spaces where we can provide uh, the resources to maybe bring back um, our pollinator um, wildlife. And, um, you know, I, I think, you know, we made that decision in 2016 that we were going to go ahead with the conservation plan. So I would respectfully like to continue that plan and go ahead. Um, my understanding is that to put solar panels up there would really disrupt the whole purpose of the conservation plan. Carmela? Can I, I, I'd just like to make a comment. Uh, about a year ago, when this legislation just came uh, upon us and whatever, um, I was liaison to the Environmental Commission, and one of the things that I did was I called Assemblyman uh, John McKeon, and I said, hey, listen, take a walk with us. You know, th this is what our problem is. Um, John has an extensive background in environmental uh, law, et cetera. Um, and uh, when we finished the walk, I, I think Steve was there, uh, when we finished the walk, we said, okay, so what, what do you think is the best plan for solar panels? And his, um, his advice to us was to actually put the solar panels right on the parking lot. Mm -hmm. okay? And, I, you know, th this was a good way to get the solar panels in, which we like – we have not discussed any any type of solar and whatever, but it would still uh, create the management plan to go uh, forward. So I just want I, I want that clarification because John was very good. He mm -hmm. came and he spent a couple of hours there. So there is a compromise here, and um, later on we'll we'll take a look at solar panels on the parking lots. We've been talking about that kind of stuff for years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'll hopefully think about it. Over to Deb. Carmela, just to clarify, you're talking about like an over, the, like the parking lot, not on the parking lot, like an over the, yeah. the roof to, like, structure. Like, Menon. Yeah, yeah, you know, Menon, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding correctly. I mean, it's a great opportunity to get the uh, electric units, too. Well, that's because I think solar electric. is important. I think this is important, too. We need the native species to, to be there. But I do think... After this, we need to we need to figure out solar. We need to get some renewable here. But based on what I've researched, and I wasn't on council in 2016, um, this is what the plan was. Um, so for me, I support this as long as in the next six months we do look. Where can we put solar? How can we do it? What can we do? That sort of thing. Maureen, I think we're. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think we're looking at two things as competing when they really are non-competing. I mean we. We very much, um, we've spent at least the two and a half years that I've been on council supporting acquisition and um, maintenance of open space and recreation is very important to the people here in Madison. And sustainability and, um, you know, getting off the grid if we can is also a, a, a wonderful goal. But I don't... But, I don't think if we do it right that they're that they're competing. I think that they they can coexist uh, very nicely uh, without uh, without taking over prime pollinator land. It sounds like Carmela has provided us with a compromise. Yeah, our assemblyman said the parking lot would be a much better place. That would be acceptable to me. I mean, I think we any open space that we have available, we need to keep it as open space. And, and the parking lot 
just to be so everyone understands is incorporated in the green acres, acres funded area so right we'd still why, have to. so that the legislation uh, would allow us to do that if yeah. uh, if it passes yeah. correct yeah I, I just want to point out I, I'm fairly certain this council endorsed that plan because I'm pretty sure we passed a resolution endorsing that particular action that was taken by our representatives on our behalf because it was really structured in a way that primarily or maybe exclusively benefited Madison. Um, and I do think we're going to have to do parking lots. The, you know, the shame is we really don't have buildings that we can put things on. So for us, it's land and a handful of parking lots, and, and they're going to be more challenging and, and cost significantly more money. But I, I just, I think in the, in the future, two things. One, both of these ideas, I know we discussed this a long time ago, but when we did the um, open space review back in January, this particular project didn't appear on here. So I wasn't even aware until we saw the packet this past week that it was coming due this week. And then second, you know, the, the idea that Ben discussed with us, it would have also been nice if we had discussed it as a council. Because again, things seem to get sort of shot down in the dark without the entire council being aware of it. So I, I would prefer if we had a fuller conversation about some of these ideas in the future so we could sort of handle what is the better way to go forward with some of these things before we get so far down the road that a lot of people have committed a lot of time to a very good idea? Well, I mean, we, we did have yeah. a lot of discussion and a lot of meetings and presented um, the report by the ad hoc uh, advisory committee on the passive part of the MRC in 2016. Mm -hmm. That was evolving. Um, we, um, you know, at that time, the solar issue didn't come up. Um, the solar issue has not been discussed by this council. Yes, it, it's definitely important because we want you know en renewable energy resources. But it sounds to me as if we've got some alternatives here. I'm I'm not sure. You know, I think we're following the procedure with uh, presenting a you know a, in the work session um, the the proposal. Um, we we did have. Uh, Last year, um, and I think maybe in the beginning of this year, in January, uh, the community garden came to us with requests for the seeds and said this is just part and parcel of the, the conservation plan. That was stage one and stage two. This is stage three. So I, I don't know much, how much more time you need. Um, it comes, the projects come um, on a revolving basis. And the committees uh, within the borough um, if, if they have a project that they think can warrant open space funding and they've, they've made their match, they come, we vote, and we bring it to the council and follow the procedure. It's in the work session. If you think it's too quick to vote on it tonight, um, then you vote it down. No, I mean, the one thing I would ask is if this has been worked on since 2016, then really it should have appeared as a potential project on our list for open space for 2016. And I'm looking at the, the, the document we got in January, and it says potential projects this year, Hartley Dodge, Dodge Field Lighting, Museum of Early Trades, Athletic Field Improvements, MRC Remediation. So again, we don't know what the advisory committee is considering until they bring it forward. And I, I'd like to be able to see what the full list is that is in the hopper at any given time. Well, our volunteers sometimes need time and, and aren't mm -hmm. you know, really coming to us and saying, OK, we're working on getting the money. We're not sure when we're going to get it. I mean, the dog park issue has been with us for several years now. And they've yeah. been consciously raising the money and waiting for an LOI. Mm -hmm. And you know, I didn't know whether it was even going to come up this year. And we are bringing it forward now. I mean, it's a, it's a little tricky, I, Pat. I, I think we should, anything that's a possibility, we should keep on the list, just so we keep visibility. That's all I'm asking. I, 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 I've asked this for five and a half years. Yeah. Yeah, good, good well, point. we've got good, it as well. Yeah, good, good points on both sides, that if, if, it's, if it's a possibility, even if it's in a secondary category, yeah. there's nothing wrong with uh, list, listing it. Um, again, this, is, uh, this ordinance is up for introduction, ordinance 21. And then we'll, we'll move on to the uh, second part, oh, okay. which is the uh, backup part. All right. All, right, All right, so now we're going on to the dog park. Yes. Okay. All right, we are asking to establish a fenced off-leash dog park in Memorial Park in Madison. Uh, we would like to uh, the council to approve a grant of $18,797. A dog park committee was set up uh, in probably 2014, 2015 um, to plan a dog park in Madison. In the fall, the committee made a presentation to the council identifying a space in Memorial Park off of uh, Rosedale Avenue as the best location to put the dog park. 
The ident area was identified as clean and safe and an area that will not endanger or disturb property and wildlife. The Parks Committee supports the project. The Council had asked the Parks Committee to um, uh, vote to uh, the resolution to support it. They did. The Dog Park Committee raised the matching funds of 5000 and they submitted the application for a grant to the Open Space Advisory Committee. The money will be used to install a fence. The committee has coordinated with DPW and volunteers for park maintenance. The committee has also has contacts and information for things such as signs, trash, receptacles, dog, waste bags, etc. So we recommend that be done. Um, just a little history. Uh, when the MRC land was purchased, uh, we created the two fields, but we had the advisory committee that I just mentioned in the previous application, and one member uh, was from the dog park. And at the time we submitted a report, that advisory committee submitted a report to the council um, on the passive portion we, portion, we determined because of the remediation issues, there really wasn't a space at the MRC for a dog park. But we recommended that the space off of uh, behind the skating rink would be more appropriate. And um, so that, in turn, um, the council had to approve a wetland study and a letter of interpretation for the area for a dog park. That was finally submitted and then brought back and Last year, um, the council reported and got a resolution from the Parks Committee supporting this uh, proposal. Um, I know that this area is also a place where the Boy Scouts, Scouts once a year have an overnight, but um, the chair of the Parks Committee last fall um, said that we've got several great areas in Madison, two other parks in Madison that would be ideal for the Scouts for overnight, sites having running water, defibrillators, bathrooms, and we can also um, use the Open Space Trust Fund for any improvements to parks to enhance any overnight experience um, and to make sure that the Boy Scouts can, you know, continue their adventure. So, and this year, I should mention that the Scouts will not be displaced. They've already submitted their permit, and they will use the site for their overnight this year. So that's the second request for funding, and that's an ordinance tonight. Council, questions or comments? Right, so that's uh, Ordinance 22, which is listed for introduction. And we now move on to ordinances for hearing. Will the clerk please read the statement? Ordinance is scheduled for hearing. We're introduced by title and passed on the first reading at the regular meeting of the council, held on May 13, 2019. We're posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the general public requesting same. I call up ordinances for second reading. Ask the clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 19-2019. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 294 of the Borough Code entitled Parking Lots to increase daily parking fees for the Crescent parking lot. And uh, I open the hearing for <coughs> Ordinance 19, which and the Crescent is the parking right at the train station. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 19-2019. I second the motion. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. This is Vitali. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Rowe. Yes. Ms. Byrne. Yes. Ms. Yes. I declare ordinance 19-2019 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance accordance with the law. I call up ordinance 20-2019. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending and supplementing Chapter 59 of the Borough Code prohibiting the retail sale of dogs and cats in the borough. I open the hearing for Ordinance 20, and would anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I cl oh. Okay, as you're walking up, the um, rules on comments are, please try to keep your comments to three minutes or less. I will give you one minute grace period, ask you to stop hard at four minutes, and we'll always start off with your name and address, please. Uh, hi, good evening, Mayor and Town Council. My name is Jeff Morton. I'm the owner and president of Shake Paul Pet Stores, Union, New Jersey, and Greenbrook, New Jersey. In the past three years, I have testified in front of many town councils, such as this, advocating for the legal right 
in New Jersey to operate our licensed and inspected businesses. I've learned that every municipality is different in how they react to the invasion of animal activists that come in, pushing and hounding their way to push town councils to adopt very restrictive legislation on our business. Jersey City is different than Morristown. Red Bank is different than Kenilworth. Those four cities, by the way, were approached by animal activists and were refuted. There are more than 500 towns in New Jersey, towns and cities of all sizes, that have not adopted legislation such as this. So should you decide to vote no, you certainly would be uh, in the majority of towns here in the state of New Jersey. The Madison Town Council, unfortunately, has refused to meet with pet store owners and members of our New Jersey Coalition of Responsible Pet Stores, being the major st uh, stakeholders here. Uh, I own the largest store and have yet been able to, uh, to secure a meeting. Yet, you've sat down with the activists. We all know that your town has an ongoing business relationship with another seller of dogs, St. Hubert's. Doesn't passing an ordinance which favors them in commerce while banning our business seem a bit unfair? Your ordinance allows many different kinds of businesses to sell canines but specifically bans pet stores from selling the exact same thing. Rescue dogs, working dogs, shelter dogs, homeless dogs, abandoned dogs, a trained dog, an untrained dog, a purebred dog, a mixed breed dog, and from your own ordinance, a donated dog or a seized dog. Despite the marketing adjective placed before it, they're all canines allowing one type of business to sell canines while banning another is illegal in my view. Legally it may be called unfair business practices or violations of the Commerce Clause or Equal Protection Act, but I've decided to let uh, our attorneys defer to that. I'm calling this the $100,000 vote tonight because if you pass this ordinance, that's at least how much money that the town of Madison will cost its taxpayers in defending this poorly written ordinance. In three years of providing testimony to town councils, I have never once voiced one, an option. One, one minute. I have never once voiced uh, my option uh, to legally sue, so congratulations, you're the first. I'm sure you've received the correspondence from our uh, attorney today, so please be aware this is not a veiled threat. If the Council and Health Department really cared about the best interests of the citizens of Madison, then you would legislate and regulate the origins, the origins of all animals coming into your town. Shelters routinely and even proudly boast of bringing sick and diseased animals into town and then using these poor animals to shamelessly ask for donations. Regulations clearly work in New Jersey, and it has so since the middle of 2015 when it's illegal for a New Jersey pet store to buy a dog from a puppy mill. So in reality, passing this ordinance will not close a single bad breeder, will not save a single dog's life. It is a solution looking for a problem, uh, time, and the problem will be expensive for this town and could have easily been avoided. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Hello, Jill Rhodes, uh, 78 Ridgedale a uh, Avenue, actual resident of this town and somebody with skin in this game. I guess you can call me an animal activist. I volunteer at St. Hubert's. Um, I just wanted to stand up and say I applaud you guys for bringing forward this ordinance. Um, it's often very challenging to identify um, reputable breeders. There's a whole lot of rhetoric I won't go into, but I just want to say thank you and I support this. Thank you.
Janice Fisher, uh, Manasquan, New Jersey. I'm with Friends of Animals United New Jersey. I'll make this extremely brief. First of all, we have 130 ordinances passed in New Jersey, so that does not leave 500 towns without an ordinance. Second of all, in terms of um, a lawsuit, I always say you can sue a bologna sandwich. It doesn't mean that you would be successful, although I know no town would want to be sued. But just to put forth some history, um, in all of the ordinances adopted across the country since 2012, that's seven years, there have only been seven challenges to the ordinance on a constitutional basis. All of the ordinances have been upheld in court, including on appeal. So um, while nobody wants to see a town sued, no New Jersey town has been sued yet. That's 130. And certainly, if any lawyer were to represent the coalition of responsible pet stores, they should look at the case precedent because uh, they're probably wasting their money. And I know that doesn't mean a lot to you, but I wanted you to know. And I could you know, send you that information if you need it. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy Daly, West End Avenue. Um, I've spoken to you about this uh, dog um, and cat ordinance before. Um, and I believe what I, I called it irrelevant at the time to Madison. I still <coughs> think it's not something that, uh, that is at the heart and soul of something that Madison needs. Um, I say that as a person who, like Mrs. Rhodes, has been um, called by many of my neighbors an animal activist. I do have um, a dog now that's an adopted dog. Every animal I've ever owned, and I've had animals most of my life, every animal has all, every one of them has been adopted. So I speak as someone who has only ever adopted. I have never purchased a dog. I know many dogs who have been purchased, many families, many neighbors of my very own who've purchased dogs. That's the decision, that's the choice that they made. My family always chooses to adopt. That's what we choose to do. Um, and like I said, I have been called by many of my neighbors an animal activist myself. But tonight, my position on this particular ordin ordinance that you're considering, my position is that um, it's a dangerous precedent to set to restrict trade of any sort in our borough. And I would, I would caution you to think very, very carefully before you decide to pass this particular ordinance. There are all kinds of trades that we have going on within the four square miles of our borough. And to decide to restrict one of them, it, I think it sets a very worrisome precedent as someone who lives within the borough. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wish to merge? Step forward. <clears throat> Cindy Knowles, owner of Fairy Licious, Tewksbury, New Jersey. Um, this law has not been challenged in the state of New Jersey. The state of New Jersey, we've already started to do our homework with our attorneys, and um, uh, there is some very good case law in place under the laws of this state. Um, this has been challenged before, and there actually have been settlements before, very large settlements in other parts of the country, so I don't know exactly what Ms. Fisher is referring to. Um, I've sat and listened to the likes of these people defame mine and the other pet shops in the state. You want the truth? Come to our shops like the other council members have. Look at our look at the records. Look at our, the regulations we follow. Get on the phone with our breeders and let us give you full transparency. If a new beautiful woman's boutique wants to open in town offering only expensive designer clothes, are you going to ban them because there is a thrift shop offering clothes from the likes of the Goodwill because it's the humane thing to do? Are you going to ban them when the likes of people sitting in this room lie and tell you they were made in inhumane sweatshops? 
If a new restaurant wants to open up in the town, are you going to require them only to serve a vegan menu because it's the humane thing to do? No more eating meat for consumers' consumption in Madison? If the dog park should go through, are you going to ban my puppies from all the people in Madison that have bought dogs from me? Are you going to ban store-bought puppies from going to the dog park? Only rescue dogs can go there? If a new veterinarian comes into town, are you going to ban them from seeing puppies from a pet store? Are you going to tell them they can only see rescue dogs? We have puppies all over Madison and the surrounding area. Go into the very popular boutique Sugar Rush right here in town. You'll be greeted by one of my pups. Drive by no drive, and you will probably see the most adorable little puppy, new little puppy strutting her stuff down the street. She was just purchased in my shop last week. What oversight are you going to provide if a store like the one these activists pushed behind me, the shelter rescue model, like Pat's Pups down in uh, Tom's River, opens in town? They did everything illegally, from broker dogs from Georgia with falsified vet records to selling puppies with parvo and other diseases. The Cherry Hill Health Department had to come in and shut them down. Families were left with huge emotional and monetary losses as, as the dogs were sick and dying with disease. They were a shelter rescue model, the same model that you're pushing here, and they washed their hands of the monetary liabilities and the consumer protections. Why? Because there was no regulation. They didn't have to pay for those vet bills. They didn't have to make good with the consumers. Google it. One, one minute. You'll see it. Are you going to continue to subject your townspeople to the like of the local rescue who knowingly adopted out a rabid disease kitten when they were instructed by a New Jersey licensed veterinarian not to. How do I know this went down? I own the animal hospital where this was done. This same rescue was in the local patch just last week to adopt out a dog from overseas. After ignoring, and your health department continuing to ignore, the information we were sending regarding the CDC cracking down on foreign imports and the disease being brought in. We sent you countless accounts of HSUS deplorable shelters, state health department shutting down these unregulated operations, horrible maulings from unvetted rescue dogs that uh, should have never been adopted out. Our job will not be done here and if this is uh, passed tonight. We feel your residents need to know about it. And like uh, Jeff said, we are ready to uh, put our attorneys in. Time. You're, you're, you can spend your tax dollars. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? My name is Chris Shore, 31 Shady Lawn Drive. I guess I'd like to thank some of the speakers tonight for our tour of New Jersey and for flights of rhetoric that I really have rarely encountered in my life. I think also the implication or the suggestion on the part of some of the speakers that this was not a well thought out ordinance, that research wasn't done or that proper and due diligence wasn't done is insulting to all of you and frankly to me I voted for you. I applaud what you've done, I approve it, I thank you for looking at the well-being of this town and the businesses in it. I think we have every right to legislate the kinds of things that we want to be true of Madison. Thank you. Thank you. If you didn't yeah, write your name, thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard, please step forward now. Seeing none. I no. Yeah, please, please, please don't hesitate. You know, I don't want to have too much time in between. So if you're gonna, if you want to speak, don't wait until I almost close the hearing. It's Nora Parker, St. Hubert's Animal Welfare Center. I thought this was an opportunity to speak, not an invasion. So I apologize if you consider it an invasion. Um, First of all, we just want to clear up um, the fact that shelters do indeed follow the same rules, and we're very proud of the fact that we uh, meet or exceed every regulation. Today, I know there was some discussion that the shelters are not regulated. Um, I think when we talk about this, we've made it abundantly clear that we're talking here about living beings, not clothing. So that's important to us. Um, 
there has been some talk about the St. Hubert's Sister Shelter Way Station program, and we would just like to make it clear there are no shelters that are promoting the birth of more puppies. There's simply coalition of shelters following every rule, regulation, and practice to address the population disparity in our country and move animals from areas of need to areas of opportunity. Not only are we not seeking to buy puppies, I've read somewhere, but we are returning part of the adoption fee to the source communities for spay and neuter in their communities to stem the tide of overpopulation. And to date, that program has invested $272,000. button there for a second. Just hit the red button. Just, I just want to see if you're... The red button. The red just button. hold it down just and speak just for a second. I want to see if it's your microphone that could be. Okay, release it now and start talking again. Better? Well, let's let's just see how it goes. It might I can, I'm loud if you want me to just yeah. do it without. <laughs> um, so we have said from the beginning that our issue is not to ban the dogs that have come from puppy sorts from any activity or any care or any treatment whatsoever when they're already here. Our concern is to stop the sourcing of puppies from the puppy mills. Um, just last week, uh, when I arrived at the shelter, we had just welcomed a new puppy. It was a puppy from Shakerpaw that originally retailed for $3,800. Um, this was a free country. The market bears what it bears. But as my dad used to say, I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. And if you want to show me a dog, a puppy that retails for $3,800, I would like to see a pedigree, not a piece of paper that shows me what puppy mill that dog originated from and what their past history is, especially as a major supplier to Petland. Um, we also found it, again, it's a free country, but the predatory financing at some of these stores to be able to finance part of this puppy at an APR of 151.0 something. Um, there is, of course, a rebate finance program if the puppy is paid off by July. Uh, but if not, the amount paid back one minute thousand dollars and we're at a $10,000 dog pretty quickly. Again, it's a free country, but that leaves a bad taste and a bad message to us. Um, we don't have any issue with a reputable breeder, but their dogs are not sold in retail stores. It's just not true. Um, we have provided the council with some other information about the sourcing of these dogs. Um, it doesn't matter to St. Hubert's. Well, I mean, it matters that we are your provider of animal care and rescue, but it doesn't matter what municipality we go to to speak about this issue. We feel the same way. It's not about our relationship with the community. It's about our caring of the animal welfare and the conditions in many of these um, source societies. And so we're not buying all the information that is coming from the pet store owners, and we never will. Thank you. End time. Well done. Hi, my name is Stephanie Earl. I'm also with Very Licious. Um, I think we have said, and we will continue to say, when we're talking about rescues and the proliferation of rescues, we're not talking about organizations such as St. Hubert's. We're talking about the hundreds and hundreds of unregistered rescues around the state. Um, it was reported on May 16th in the New York Post that 20 dogs died while in the care of the ASPCA while being transported from Mississippi to Wisconsin. While this perhaps was a tragic accident, although reportedly not a crash, it has been painfully underreported in the media. The article reads, quote, the ASPCA is investigating what happened, end quote. Why is the ASPCA investigating itself? Why are there no updates from law enforcement? I've virtually seen nothing since one article in the New York Post about this issue. 
If this was a breeder transport to a pet store, we already would have been strung up and crucified by both the media and the animal rights community. There is an absolute and complete double standard in rescue <laughs> Why are you considering a pet store ban, yet not talking about the other 96% of pet, pet um, procurements when pet stores only account for about 4% of dog acquisitions? Um, we have cited many, many examples of problems in the rescue marketplace, from dangerous and inappropriate adoptions to diseases being imported that were thought to be eradicated in this country and for which there are no vaccines to unregistered, mismanaged rescues keeping animals in deplorable, inhumane conditions. Yet nobody is talking about it. And any effort to regulate rescues is met with fierce opposition from the same people insist insisting our businesses be banned. It doesn't matter the quality of our breeders or the quality of our stores. This is an absolute double standard. So we're back here contemplating Ordinance 2020-19, which relies on the same old faulty assumptions and outdated stereotypes about today's commercial breeders. It is ironic that the rescues, which seek to monopolize the retail marketplace, are able to source dogs and puppies from virtually anywhere, including the breeders that I am pro prohibited from buying from and from which we are accused of, accused of keeping in business. They can and are importing dogs from foreign countries, from southern puppy mills, from dog auctions, none of which are legal or acceptable for us. How unfortunate, it's an absolute double standard. Dog ownership is growing and the demand for dogs and puppies grows also. As a public policy, we should all be striving to provide consumers with as many choices of healthy, temperamentally sound as possible um, dogs instead of banning any one source. I just don't get that elected officials and those serving on local boards of health continue, what, one minute. continue to regard dogs that come from unregulated sources as somehow better than those who, whose history, vaccination records, and breeders can be determined. It's your job to protect the public health of the entire community, not to make public policy decisions based on personal bias towards or sim, sim, sympathy for a cause or agenda, and not to have a double standard. With so many more important issues before us, it's time for the government to remove themselves from making decisions such as this for us. Let consumers in the marketplace decide who thrives and who fails. We are more than capable of making the choices that are right for us and our families as are our customers. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. I mean, I close the hearing. Lost track of where I was. <laughs> Go <laughs> <Your> home. <laughs> Mayor, I move Ordinance 20 2019. Second. Any council discussion? Pat. Um, I'm going to be voting no, and I voted no on the introduction. After the meeting, I was contacted by the press and asked for a statement why. So I'm just going to read that into the record so it's official. Um, I've spoken to many people in the community, and I don't believe there's universal support for this ordinance, as many have claimed. Many people express concerns about why we are targeting one type of business especially given that pet stores are not even considered the problem, which our own ordinance acknowledges. When we had issues with underage drinking, we did not institute a ban on all liquor stores. Why would we do the same for a service where we've never logged the complaint? Listening to all the comments over three council meetings and now four, and reading through the emails we've received on this issue, which is more than I've received combined for everything else in the 15 years I've served on two bodies, it's clear that something that is a state legislative issue should not be handled town by town. The state has the ability to investigate the issue properly, take sworn testimony, question those witnesses, and make truly informed decisions. We only get to hear anecdotal evidence from both sides that each have a vested interest and each have a vested interest in their position. I don't believe the council has enough information to move forward with this ordinance. I voted not to do last uh, meeting. I'll be voting no on final passage tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, Maureen? Yeah, I moved to Madison because of a dog. I had a dog. I need to find a place to live with her, and we found Madison. And I've had dogs ever since. I've had rescue dogs, I've had other dogs. Over the last couple of weeks, I have, my inbox, my mailbox has been overflowing with um, rhetoric and threats. Um, I, I, you know, I'm a volunteer. Yeah, we don't get paid up here, we're volunteers. Um, and, um, 
I, I think that I have I have seen I have seen cases that unfortunately were um, animals that were were bought because somebody saw them in the window and they ended up having a lot of medical issues because really once you bring that dog home, Maeve Byrne is not letting you bring it back. Um, I think yes, I think um, you know maybe. I don't know. I, I I I'm on the fence, and since I'm on the fence, I'm I'm going to vote with. I'm going to go yes because I, I think it's a start. Thank you. Any other comment? Uh, Oscar, then oh, Deb. Right. Um, from my perspective, um, I've heard a lot of support from Madison residents. Yeah. Um, I've appreciated. I've read, as you said, a lot of emails in the past several weeks um, on the issue. Our own pet stores here in town uh, have no problem with us passing this ordinance. And I think it's, it's the right thing to do. Um, and so I'll be voting yes. Deb? Um, the objective of adopting this ordinance is to get something on the books now to prevent a business of this nature from opening in Madison in the future. There are currently no pet stores in Madison that sell pets, and the stores in town are in favor of this ordinance. Therefore, this does not hurt the local economy while also giving extensive advance notice. And in the 50 or 60 emails we've received over the past two months, yeah. um, it's anybody we've heard from from Madison in writing um, has been in favor of it. I'm not saying it's a universal support, but we haven't heard from anybody saying, no, we're against it. And it should be looked at as someone going to the doctor before getting sick for preventive measures instead of going to the doctor after you become sick. Armella. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I obviously will be voting yes on this. Um, I, I, I wish that people would understand what this group of people sitting up here, what this town means to us. And we spend a great deal of time. It takes a lot of time to read six or seven very long emails to us and to absorb them, to ask questions about them. So um, I think people need to understand what this town means to us, why we do this, why we sit here, and why we listen. Um, to uh, people saying, oh, you're going to get sued and whatever. Um, I, I, it, I, I just, I can't even believe people talk to other people that way. But um, I think it's probably one of the greatest uh, pleasures of my life is to sit here and to make a decision for a town that I absolutely love and I'm trying to protect. We have towns in the area that have had some very bad um, situations and we want to be proactive. Maybe we're only 132nd um, of the municipalities, but if we all start working and maybe the state will say, hey, listen, you know, we need to listen and we need to do something. So I'm hoping that, that this is where it's going, um, it's going to. But this is a great town, and one of the reasons is is that I think that we make some great decisions sitting here. Okay, roll, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mr. Rowe? No. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mrs. Cohen? Yes. I declare Ordinance 20 2019 adopted and finally passed, and I ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and file the ordinance according to the law. We now move on to invitation for discussion. This is on any topic. Same rules applies. Please step forward, state your name, your address, and try to keep your comments to three minutes, but I'll give you that one minute grace period and write your name and address on the clipboard also. I'm David Luber, 7 Lawrence Road. I'm speaking as a resident and not as or for the Borough Audit Committee, nor for any other borough boards or commissions that I sit on. <clears throat> At the last council meeting, Kathy Daly objected to the wording of CFO Jim Burnett's 2018 budget summary describing the utility surplus that is transferred to the borough for operations and capital investment as some kind of 
utility tax on Madison residents. The use of the surplus as described is something that I support, but I acknowledge that how the transfer should be affected and how much can or should be transferred has been debated ever since the borough first transferred monies from the utility surplus in order to meet capital construction needs way back in 1927. It was even the subject of lawsuits in the mid-1980s, lawsuits that the borough won, I would note. So it is okay to debate how we use the utility surplus, but the use of disparaging terms like misleading and less than honest to describe the material presented in Jim's report is not. To me, it sounds like a veiled accusation of willful lying, and hence, I think an apology is in order. Personally, I believe that having a municipal utility is a gift that has been granted to us in previous councils, and for two reasons. We get excellent electrical service, as just reported by Councilman Rowe. The net earnings of the surplus from the utility is used to pay for municipal services, debt service, and pay-as-you-go investment in our streets, our sewers, and needed equipment. With the utility dividend, which you increased to $2 million this year, resident customers of the utility pay competitive rates for their electricity. Yes, JCPNL customers in neighboring communities typically pay something less for their power than do Madison residents. But I'm pretty certain the JCPNL, unlike Madison, was not ranked in the top 10% of all utilities in the country for the fewest outages in 2017 or in any other year for that matter. And certainly, recent storms have provided us with numerous examples of, how, of their inability to restore power in a timely manner. As Jim points out in the report, the top 50 customers of Madison's utility pay a full 40% of the total revenues earned. What, one minute. Whereas the top 50 property taxpayers account for only 12% of the borough's total tax income. And 17 of those top 50 customers are nonprofits that do not pay any property taxes. Having a top quality electric service at a reasonable cost with some of the net income, substantial portion of which comes from large non-residential customers like Rheology, the Geralda tenants, and Drew, going for investment in Madison's infrastructure rather than going into the pockets of a utilities investors has always sounded like a pretty good deal to me. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to comment? Please step forward. Kathy Daly, uh, somebody took your pad. Oh, it is somebody the took the pad. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm going to limit my response to what Mr. Luber said to uh, to the uh, boundaries of what my comments were the last time. I did not say anything negative about the electric service that we receive here in Madison. Our electric service is exceptional, absolutely, and it operates at a very extensive profit. Um, and the rates that determine the, those profits are set by this governing body. So um, my, my point when I presented the, the chart that I presented at your last meeting is that if you are going to extol how wonderful our electric is and include that as something that Madison has that the other towns don't have, we have to acknowledge it's only fair to also acknowledge that it comes at a cost to the people who pay the electric rates here in the borough. The people or the organizations that pay those electric rates. And yes, many of our largest electric users are nonprofits. Personally, 
I don't think it's necessary to charge churches and educational, institu educational institutions uh, extra for their electric service. I don't think it's, if they are, they don't pay any taxes, so uh, I, I don't think there's um, a particular need to charge them an egregious rate or to charge residential customers an egregious rate for their electric service. Um, egregious is actually probably the wrong word, but it's a, it's a profit that's beyond what we need to operate. So, again, my comments are related to how it is presented. If you're going to say that it's an advantage that we have, you have to acknowledge that it's an, adva it's an advantage for which we pay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we move on to introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? The ordinance is scheduled for first reading. We'll have a hearing date set for Monday, June the 24th, 2019. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. And just as a reminder, since this is a Wednesday meeting and we have less than the 14 days ahead, that's why we have a uh, skip a meeting in between for the hearings on these uh, in ordinances. I call up ordinances for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title, Ordinance 21-2019. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $49,275 from the Municipal Open Space Trust Fund as matching funds to implement a conservation management plan at the Madison Recreation Complex. Mayor, I move Ordinance 21-2019. I second it. Any further council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Yes. Yes. I call up Ordinance 22 2019. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $18,797 from the Municipal Open Space Trust Fund as matching funds to establish a dog park at, dog park at Memorial Park. Mayor, I move Ordinance 22 2019. I second that. Any further council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Mrs. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Burr? Yes. Mrs. Cohen? Yes. All right, consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. So we're going to move the non-sustainable um, New Jersey ones first, and then we'll do the second just so we have a uh, kind of a standout record if we can explain any of those. Uh, okay, so um, I move resolution 169 to R179 and R187 and R188. I'll second. Any discussion or any of, that, of those that need to be pulled? Roll call vote. Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Yes. All right. And then the. Uh... Now I'm, you want me to move 180? Yep. Okay. So, Mayor, I move uh, resolution 180 through 186. I'll second. Again, all these uh, help support our sustainable New Jersey uh, certification. Any discussion? Uh, Jim um, Is, had said yep. to me earlier that he would. Give a little more amplification. That, that, that would be good. Would that be good? Thank you. Excellent idea. Okay, great. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor and Council President Bailey. Um, resolutions 180 through 186 are all being advanced by the Sustainable Madison Committee. Sustainable Madison Committee is seeking to pursue a sustainable Jersey certification. We received silver certification back in 2016, bronze in 2013. Uh, time is up and we need to recertify. Uh, it's a wonderful group of good volunteers that are working hard, um, their free time to advance this submission. Um, the documents are somewhat self-explanatory, um, but I'll go through them briefly. Um, they will be distributed um, once uh, soon they pass uh, to the various staff um, for their consideration and action. None of these um, cost any sort of significant dollars uh, whatsoever, and some of them generate savings. Um, resolution 180 is a new 
uh, resolution. Um, it was reviewed by our health officer. It deals with responsible pet ownership um, and references appointing an animal control officer, making sure we enforce rabid uh, rabies uh, control statutes, have, have education programs, and support TNR, trap, neuter, and release programs. Um, none of these are costly, and we have the funds in our health and animal control trust um, uh, to manage what's mentioned there. Resolution 181, supporting the wildlife action plan. This is identical to resolution R231, which was adopted in 2013. And it's just supporting the philosophy of the state plan. There is no mandate that we have to do anything other than just stating that we support the philosophy of what's behind the state plan. Uh, resolution uh, 182 recognizes um, uh, and supports MACA as the creative team advancing the arts. Um, it's identical to Resolution 233, which was passed in 2013. Um, R183 is a green purchasing resolution. It's identical to a Resolution 202 that was passed in 2013. Nothing requires that the purchasing be done um, uh, only through uh, green purchasing, but it just brings to the attention of the department heads that it's something that's important that we want to look at. Um, and there are times where um, there is a savings. Um, I remember one of the first things I bought here was uh, folders, and I, there was a choice to buy one that was uh, uh, had 100% recyclable, and I just chose to do it, and it happened to be the cheapest ones. Um, R184 uh, uh, is um, environmental grounds and maintenance. That's identical to R208, which was in 2013, and is similar to the previous green purchasing, which is dealing with um, grounds and maintenance. Um, R185 is a resource savings revenue. This was done in June 2013 and May 2016. And finally, the anti-idling R186 um, resolution was previously adopted in 2016 as R156. Um, the, each one of these gets points. And the committee of volunteers is really anxious to get as many points as possible so they can clear silver certification. Getting a higher certification gives us a better opportunity to um, win grant funds. We have one sustainable Jersey grant funds in the Pistons office. He receives one sustainable Jersey grant. He, he's great at it, actually. I hope he keeps doing it. Um, he's won sustainable Jersey grant dollars and is submitted for others. So um, it's important that uh, we advance these. And as I said, I don't think there's any um, uh, significant cost or uh, challenges um, that this pose uh, to the borough. Any questions for Jim? Roll call. Of, oh, I'm sorry, Pat. Sorry. Um, two questions. The first is on 186. Is there not a borough ordinance against idling for longer than a certain period of time? It's, it's, there's yeah. a state, state law. Okay. State law. So I guess this is redundant, but it's required? It, yeah. It's just showing support for. Okay. The, the, uh, sec <laughs> the second question is it's not here, but do we get any points if we develop renewable solar or renewable energy? within the borough? I, I don't know, Pat. I, I'm okay. not working through, uh, through that. We're doing a lot of other things to get points. There's a wonderful team of volunteers that's going through all of our consumption of electric and natural gas building by building to get the borough's carbon footprint. Our hope is to have an in, a summer intern every year update that data and track that data. There's a lot of good things that come from it. It's a difficult process. Myself, Michael, uh, Lisa, Ellis, um, Bob Duffy, Ken O'Brien, Ray, we've all been working with these volunteers to try to get them all the paperwork and, and information necessary to advance and get the certification. Oh, well, thank you. Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Mrs. Bailey? Yes. Rowe? Yes. Byrne? Yes. Mrs. Cohen? Yes. All right, there is no unfinished business. Uh, approval of vouchers. Will the clerk please read the voucher rot? Register. Earned funds, $6,236,574.78. The general capital fund, $132,456.76. Electric operating fund, $426,326.64. Electric capital fund, $119,198.87. The water operating fund, $24,153.84. The water capital fund, $199,439.80. The trust, $4,594.20. The total is $7,142,744. 89 cents. Mayor, I move approval of the vouchers. Second. Any discussion or any need to be polled? Roll call vote, please. Vitaly? Yes. 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 
Byrne? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Under new business, I'd like to make the following appointment requiring council consent, and that is uh, Tom Aaron Potus of uh, Pomeroy Road as um, tr uh, library trustee for unexpired term through 2020. We're so moved. Second. We're going to do a roll call vote to, because we need to register a abstention. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Cohen? I abstain. And now you can do the next thing, too. Oh, uh, Mayor, I move that we adjourn the meeting. All <laughs> in favor? It, it, Aye. Aye. It took me a Thank you all. Half a second. A second. All right. Yes. 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 You know, it was just. Exactly. I want to thank you.